Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish lock there for a lovely sunny day up in Minehead. Now I'm fishing today with my friends Tom, Ben and Chris aboard Mikey Webber's boat. Hey boy. We're just about to set off so I'll do the rest of the chatting when I'm aboard the boat. I'll explain the rods, the rigs, the tactics, everything like that as we're doing it. Let's get going. Unfortunately we can't do anything about the rain today so we'll just do our very best. The plan is, is we're going to go and do some top fishing. Some mixed fishing on some rough ground, I'm expecting bullos, dogfish, conger eels, ideally top. First order of business though is to try and find some bait. Fresh mackerel being the best bait. I've done a bit of bait fishing, Mikey's put the anchor down onto the first mark and we're just setting all the rods up. Now we are fishing a couple of different types of techniques. The rods at the back are all fishing just down tied. And the rods at the side, like this one here, I'm just getting a bite on man. The ones here, and Chris is on the side there, those are up tied as those are fished up tied. So the rods that are just going straight down into the tide are the down tiders. And the ones that are casted up tide are the up tiders. I will talk yeah. through about how to rig an up tider. <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> Somebody else is pulling them in. <laughs> it's got to be a PB dogfish, surely. Yeah, the, the, the area that we're fishing over, the, the key thing is just getting the fish in on a feed. So the first couple of baits that we put out is just to build a bit of a scent trail and hopefully the fish will come in after that. Mikey does tell us that on this area of ground you do get hounds, dogfish, rays and top. So I'm imagining the first fish that are going to be coming in are going to be the dogfish. And as they chew up the baits a little bit more and as more baits go down, more scent goes down, it'll bring in everything else. Yeah, as far as dogfish go, this one, quite an unusual one. You've seen one like that before. Left it on there a bit longer. Unfortunately, you've just got a fish thrown. It's not even hooked. Yeah. The hook is. Yeah, you can see it's the hook. It's just tangled itself yeah. around its teeth. Oh, my man. Fresh bait. Right, I'm going to get Chris to explain his baiting up. Because you're sticking a bait out for a hound as well, and that yeah. was a hound bait. I'll get him to show his baiting up, and then we'll, we'll talk about the uptider. Now you're working uptider. Right, all you've got, just a single single hook, isn't it? Yeah. And a single squid right, mounted on it. That. How long would you say your hook length is? Three, four, four. So three hooks. And you, I'm, I fish my uptider slightly different. You've just got a free sliding lead all the way up your, all the way up your leader. It's a running ledger. Yeah. thing with this, when you get bites with bolt rig, they'll hook themselves. So this, you've got to wind down to them and set the hook. Yeah. But yeah, pretty simple. I'll show you my setup in a minute. I'm using, I'm using a bolt rig, which, like you said, is a solid rig. Look that on there when you cast. Just put the hook on the ground. Also, yours is a breakaway lead, isn't it? So yeah. that the, the legs right. will break out. When you cast it. The key is that you're casting up tide, so the baits are away from away from the noise of the boat, and the bait will sit up there, but you don't tighten up to it, do you? So he's letting line off, and you'll notice that the lines loop down into the water. It's not much tide at the moment, so it's taking. Yeah. So what do you do? Do you just like count to ten or something like something that? Something like that. It depends how strong the tide is. Like at the moment, yeah. eight do, but when it's really flowing, 10, 15 seconds, something yeah. like that. Like, yeah. So this rod here, even though it's straight out, you can see the lines going that way. This one here will probably be cast out there, because the bow of line will go up to the bit. And you'll notice that it is bent over slightly into the tide. When something picks up the lead, picks up the bait and runs down tide with it, the rod will straighten up and then you'll get a bite. And all you do is you'll have to 
pick it up and wind all the slack line in, then set the hook and bring it in. You fish for mono as well, don't you? Yeah, that's 39 because we're fishing for toad. So it puts me a bit stronger on. And you're fishing it on the ratchet. So if you'll get a decent sized fish, pick it up like that, you'll you'll hear it by going. But if you're looking at the rod tip, what you're looking for is either like a bite like that, or like I say, it'll straighten up when it trips the lead out. Up tied itself, up tied the rods. They're generally just a bit longer so you can get more of a cast and so it keeps the line away from the boat. Whereas Chris's was a free sliding one, which meant that his slider that held his lead would go all the way up his leader. Man is a bolt rig, so man's locked into a piece that's about a foot long. The way that that works as a self hooking rig is because when it sits out in the tide, if a fish picks it up, the hook length is attached to this side and the fish runs, it runs until it hits the lead and then turns the hook into its mouth. Also, man's a fixed wire grip, being that the grips, they don't break out as they do in a breakout lead. Now my hook length, my hook length, exactly the same as Chris's. It's about two and a half to three foot long, ending in a four row and I have whipped on half a peel of crap. That's all I've done there. He's clip on. All of our rigs, we generally have them ending in a barrel swivel so that you can clip on a pre bait, it saves you a load of time. You then hook your hook onto there and cast out hopefully wherever it is that you want to fish. Now, we are actually, we've just I mean, a dozen, 15 dogfish. Okay. Yeah. Mike has decided we're going to move to another mark. So we'll fish these baits out and then we'll move. Uh, Nicely done, thank you very much mate. Oh, and the hook's come out with the net. You've just uh, talked to us slightly about starry smooth on, although you get you get two types, don't you? You get starries or commons. commons yeah. They're both the same fish. Yep. They are a, a little shark that feeds on the bottom, but they've got no teeth, you can see. Love crab and squid, don't they? Would you, is that is that the average stamp of what you get around here, or, is it, or do you get bigger, do you get smaller? Generally, further up to the east, you'll get the bigger ones. And this time, sort of this area where we are, there'll be sort of little pups like this. I was just going to say, this is a male as well, you can tell by the claspers there. You generally find that the males are smaller than the females? Yeah, definitely. Wait a minute, if you want to drop it back. Brilliant. Yeah, I missed the start of that. I was uh, that was on the uptider, and all I did was I was just busy sorting my bait out from the other rod, and sort of the hook down and then the spring up, wound down and got it all the way. I knew it wasn't a dogfish because it stayed deep. But yeah, that was the self-hooking bolt rig and the peeler crab that you saw earlier. Now I am actually I'm going to have to use a heavier lead just because that grip lead there, you can see how it's it's springing out. So I'm going to have to use a heavier one just because there's more tide in this new mark. Yeah, that's a good sign. Oh, rain's just started. Right. Just going to show you really quickly how I bit it up. Now this, this is a softy crab. I found this when I was out yesterday. Peeler crabs, you can get them I in mean, two different stages. This is like pap, just like mush. So you've, you've got to give it a good whipping onto the hook. Because there's no, there's no texture to it. So if you tried to cast with this, it would just, just fall straight off the hook. So all I'm doing is I'm just giving it a good lashing with some bait elastic just to try and give it some, some shape and some form. But there isn't much that doesn't like eating peeler crabs, is there? Catch um, bass like it, cod like it, rays like it, smooth ones like it. There isn't much that doesn't like pilot and peeler crabs. And that's it. Formed it into a, a bait and there's the hook point proud. Thank you very much. Not content with only catching one dogfish at a time. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, <laughs> look at the size of the bait that he had on there. I'll be ready to go straight back out again.
for anyone for anyone who doesn't immediately recognize what they are so, oh that's a proper bite that's a top bite that there's a bull hus yeah. yeah. we we'll have to bring some rods in <laughs> You actually, you you saw, you saw Ben cast that bait out. What was it just a flapper? Were you up tiding it or down tiding it? Up tiding. Yeah. Oh, there's a bite on this one as well. Maybe, we'll maybe together. Call it 46, 46 fork. Girth around. Ben and I have been been tagging so many different tracks around around the world actually for uh, for Noah. Talked about them tags in just a second. 17 inches girth. 46 by 17. And it's a female, is it? Yeah. There you go. It is. Four zero five zero four zero. Yeah. Just saw all them jellyfish coming, didn't it? <laughs> That's a cracker, mate. Well done. Cheers. Well done. Thank you very much. We'd actually at the same time there when we were bringing all the other baits in, one of your other baits got taken. Yeah. One of Tom's got bitten off, and another one of mine. If I can find it for you, yeah, one of mine got bitten off at the back. So yeah, a pack of them chop must have come through at the same time. Let's get some fresh baits out. We got a bite on this back rod here. That's it about getting a scent trail going and getting the fishing on the feed because them them chop. Would you say that size of chop would knock about to each other? Yeah. Because you get packed up, uh, occasionally you'll get a big one on its own, but usually they'll hang around in a group. Well, um, in a sec, when you've dealt with that, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll talk to you about your rig that you use there, Ben. Yeah. Uh, your raincoat on as well. Take a dogfish. And we just, as we were talking earlier, that you need something, you need a bigger predator in the area to come and push them off. So we'll get you a few of these now, that's a nice, a nice horses, yeah. Another female. Yeah, these are these are greater spotted cat sharks. And the dogfish are the lesser spotted cat sharks. Give a great bite, but I tell you what, they're they're finicky, aren't they? You can get them sometimes, and they'll hang onto a bait, and you get them right up to the boat, and they'll let go. Oh, there's a bite one. Oh, tighter. Ah, immense. Big size that it's a full macro flapper and that's when it's attacking them. We're a period of slack water now. And that just means that the boat, instead of going that way, we're going to swing round and go that way. Using this period of time, you're nailing the hush, you've got another nice bus there. Now I've got a rare set of knackers on, haven't I? And using this time to try and catch a little bit more fresh bait, which is in the shape of some very lively mackerel because as soon as the tide turns again we're gonna, you see we're going to fish on this mark for what like another hour or something yeah, when the tide starts running and then when the tide picks up to too strong on this mark we're going to move to a different one just one second mate just pull that up and just have a look at that rig so you've got is this 480 or is this what, what strength 
270 pound wire and you've just got a full that's going to be five foot of wire yeah depending on what you're saying like a, an eight oj okay, six oh but like a bolt rig set up for your for your lead every time pull us i've just had three doggies like in a row <laughs> i'm still nailing the bullets over here Not a difference in size of bait either. I wonder if it's the wire that's putting the putting the doggy on. Yeah. The lovely spotty one, that one. There one. Well, there's the bait in its mouth. Gosh, mate, well done. I'll get Ben to show you the rig that he caught that top on now. You were fishing with your uptider, weren't you? Yeah, just a pan uptider. Oh, God. As soon as I pick the camera up, my rod just starts going up. Right. I'll be with you in a second. Just uh, braid after you knit your leader. Just a locked in lead. So your your bolt rigs how long? A foot and a half? A foot and a bit, yeah. yeah. Like grip lead, eight ounce grip lead. Onto a bit of wire and a clip. It's quite heavy that, just because yeah. it happens to be what we have in front of And how long have you got? About three or four feet of wire? Four foot. Four foot. Mm. And then just crimped on. Yeah, and you were just going with a straight J, weren't you? That's it, straight J. And then, yeah, make sure it's like that. So it can, the hook can inch. Yeah. Okay. You had a big bait though. Yeah, it was. It was a whole macro, fresh macro flapper. So just straight in through there. Simple. Yeah, real simple. Just keep everything so it's all straight and nice and easy. All right. So you'll go through the head once. Straight through the. Yeah. So you lay the head and then in there, run like that, down like that. Pull it all straight. I've got you. Tuck it in like that. Keep the hook proud. And then just a bit of bait elastic on top. Awesome, thank you. Cheers. I'll deal with you now. What you found over there? Not on the uptider or the downtider? Yeah. You know, with the downtiders, because the line is straight to the lead and straight to the bait, you're looking for like a positive bite. And that top bite that we had earlier on a bent, you saw it just screamed off. That's the type of bait bite we're looking for. Circular dogfish, two dogs. Showing sure off now. That was more like a, a bull husk bite, that as well. Got one hook on there. Is he just hanging on to the bait? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the tide has just started to run through now. So you can see the boat's laid out, all the lines are laid out. This next hour when we're fishing here is when we're hopeful to get some trouble. You underneath my line. Do you want me to bring mine in? I'm under your line. Cool. Swirling. Calling doggy. No. Calling huss. Oh. Well, no, you're right. It is a huss. Is it? Yeah. Looks like it. Colorations. No. Yeah. It looks like a huss to me. No, that's right. Ah. Thank you. I mentioned that earlier. Huss are bad for doing that. They're just that stubborn that they hang on. Don't want to let go, but as soon as they come to the surface, just go up. Hook comes straight out. Now we've we've brought all of this tackle with us. I mean, Tom Tom has a tackle shop. We brought all our own gear with us. But Mikey and quite a few other charter boats, what they'll do is they do do tackle hires. So if you haven't got all of this tackle, charter fishing is a fantastic introduction to boat angling and some charter boats, you don't even have to have all your tackle. You can talk to the charter skipper before and, and maybe rent some. And then that will give you a good idea of what type of tackle to use and then go from there and then to buy it. In fact, actually, that uptider has tripped out. We'll give it. About another 10 minutes and we'll have a move, alright? Okay. Yeah. Huss after huss after huss. They're well fed here today anyway, aren't they? Carbon copy of the last one. Nicely done. 
Well, what do you think? We've just got the anchor down on the next mark. The, the tide picked up to the point where it just pushes off that one. We were just talking there. It's um, one of the things that I love about chart fishing is the social aspect. I mean, there's, there's five of us on it. I actually, I met, I met Tom recently at a fishing competition. Uh, ben and Chris, I've known for a while. Mikey, we fished, the first time we fished with you was December last one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we come up. We, we've done um, done a video promoting boat life. We come up with Mike and we fished for cod. And Chris absolutely nailed it with with the best cod of the session. But I, we wouldn't get all five of us on my boat or Ben's boat or Chris's boat which it's there's more of a social side of things is as well when you've got a skipper that's going to do all the all the hard graft pulling and hauling all the anchors well it just gives us time to chat chat fishing and uh, do a little bit I have recently agreed to be an ambassador for Boat Life I, um, I will put some information in the description of the video as to what it is but it's, it's uh, an exhibition of everything to do with boats that's canal boats jet skis small inflatable crafts fishing boats everything all the way from the types of engines the type of kit on board even fishing equipment there's there's going to be loads now at the last boat life show which was in february at the nec a lot of people who fed back to me that they just wanted to see me fishing from other ports and other boats so we're going to be fishing from more charter boats if you have a local charter boat that you recommend any of the skippers that you'd recommend going to or any of the targeted species put them into the comments and we'll look into going there you will probably see me and this motley crew fishing from those areas Anyway, let's get these baits out. Your uptider, because you're down at the back of the boat, is only pretty much midships on the back on the boat. Whereas my uptider went right up. So your bower line goes all the way out there, and his bait is out here somewhere. Is that a big flapper bait you had out there? Yeah, flapper. Got it. Got is it a bass? I was just going to say whatever it is, it's kiting. Is that a nice one? Is it two? Oh no, your bait slid up your line, hasn't it? Tell you what, that is a nice bass, that. No pressure. 480 pound wire. <laughs> People might argue that you've gone in there overgunned for that. That is a nice bass, that. Oh, beautifully done. That's a lovely silver. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly the right tackle for it, but yeah, you can't argue with the results. There we go. That is a stunning fish. The mark that we are fishing is an area of sandbanks. As the tide starts to pick up, you can see in the background, possibly 100 yards past the boat, where the water is boiling over the bank. Up tider again. Yours is running high, isn't it? You got a ray. What were you on there? You were making, you were making like long thin baits, though, weren't you? Uh, I can't yeah, I was looking at these. Yeah, something. Well done, Chris. Oh, I tell you what. Yeah, well practiced. Yeah. Small eyed ray, also called a painted ray. Now, when you're picking these up, and if you can see there, when we thumbnail is, very, very sharp spikes on there. And this is a male again. You can tell by his by his claspers. Do you want a photo with it, Chris or not? Should drop it back. Same again. Nice size rear. Dark, that's the ones we got. Mm. Wait, look at the colour of the water. Yeah, you notice uh, this being a female, it doesn't have those really aggressive thorns on the sides of its cheeks. 
See how much tide they're in there, can't you? He's straight. That's the same rig that you had there. Yeah. So you've just got, you've just got a long strip of mackerel on a single hook, haven't you? Pretty much, yeah. Brilliant. Right. Chris's other up tider is now all the way down tide. You can see there, because he's, he's cast it out up here, it's tripped the lead out and it's run all the way down. We're starting to get positive bites on there. Oh, that's a big thing when you're up tiding, isn't it? It's catching up with all the slack line. I don't know. Do you want me to move any rods out your way? Yeah, that's it. even though when your baits are up here, if a fish picks it up, it's going to go down tide with it. So you're going to end up right down there. That's practically still got the egg sack attached to it, hasn't it? <laughs> Tell you what, meant for speed though. We'll get right, have you got hold of it? I'm going to let go of his tail. Yeah. Right. Just showing here, these lice on it. And there on its dorsal as well. <laughs> Just seen a bite on that there, look. Yeah. It's going. Calling dogfish on that one. By keeping sustained pressure on it there, all it's done is as the tide's running that way, is it's come up in the tide. And now it's probably 150 yards further back there. A bit of bouncing mono, isn't there? Would you recommend using mono for your uh, for your uptide? On shallow, some of the shallow marks, yeah. The fish in the deeper water just cuts the depth better. It's easier to pull bottom. Why? Is it because it's got that spring in it? Yeah, yeah. Braids, no stretch, so it just pulls your lead out, is that what you're saying? Yeah, and also if you're using a like, slightly lighter rod, it'll absorb it through. Especially if it's a bit of a bumpy day. Yeah. Fighting that tide. You're gaining, now you're gaining a couple of inches at a time. Still another nice ray. Paler than the last one. That turbot had there, I would love to say that was by design, but that was just an absolute fluke. I had no idea it was even on there. It obviously had swallowed that bait and just sat on it. And I was thinking, why is everyone else catching fish and I'm not catching now? I thought I'll have no bait left. One of one was there, so yeah, it's not a big coincidence. But the rig that I was using was actually, I was experimenting with a dongle rig. The last time I did this type of fishing, I fished with James Madsen and he was using dongle rigs and he was catching lots of rays. And I thought, well, I'll give it a try. And basically all it is, is you use, this is the exact bait that came out of that turbot. You use a circle hook, a small circle, and you basically rig, hair rig a bait on it. And the way you do that is, if you can see, I've got my, like a little string inside of it. Yeah, all you do is you, you rig them on like a little string and that attaches to your hook. So it, it leaves the circle hook open to turn in the fish's mouth. Not the target, but I'll gladly take it. We're going to do five, ten more minutes at this mark. I don't know if you can see the them dirty, great, sinister clouds over there. Ten more minutes and then we'll move. It was a good bite. Just got to drop this little guy back. Ugh. Get 
give a good positive bite out, didn't it? This is a shallower mark, we're only in, let me see, 44 feet of water. The uptiders have really picked up the fish on this one. I think, I think Chris has had more fish than everybody else to put combined and he's fishing his uptiders quite a distance away. Another rear, you're calling small eyed or thornback. The different marks that we've been fishing today, we've been fishing areas of areas of reef and areas of bank. This is this is a bank leading up to some sand, which is how we've managed to pick these rays up on that little surface. Another male with them um, just look up, with them nasty little thorns on his cheeks. I'm gonna try and turn him over. There look. They always have loads more attitude, don't they? There it goes. I was literally just saying that the uptad has been plucking out the fish. Chris has just, just landed that fish and he's had to run down for this one. Oh. You just dropped that one down. Yeah, they've, they've really been plucking out the fish on this side of the boat. Just the same rig every time, isn't it? Yeah, Is it mackerel or squid you've been using? Mackerel, not bad. You found one as well, mate. It is, it's definitely on this shallower mark. It's, it's the rods that are getting further away from the boat. You've got the white belly. Is that a bass, is it? Oh, it is, it's a big bass. A big old mouth on it. That is a nice one. Oh, it's got some head. It's a clunker. <laughs> that is a clunker of a bass, mate. I'd say you might even be close to double figures for that. Well, the biggest is nine six. Yeah, well, you see, if you look at my boot right next to it. <laughs> That stunning bass there for Chris came in just under £10. As we were taking all the photos, the heavens just opened. That's the British weather for you. It's absolutely lashing it down. And Chris quietly chipping away at the fish again, up here in the corner. Are you? What are we looking at? Small eyed ray. We're just all drawing straws to us to go out with a net. <laughs> <laughs> you land this one yourself, can't you, mate? <laughs> Who's a blonde? Well done, mate. Come on, turn over. That absolute downpour seems to have calmed down for a bit. So we're all packing down, and that's it. That's, we've called it a wrap. We've made it all the way in. Yeah, it's still lovely and sunny, as you can see. Now, I spoke to Mike. This, these exact tides last year was when we were talking, so it was why I'd booked these tides. I spoke to Mikey and I said specifically I want to target to open. So that was why he put me on these tides. A lot of what he does is seasonal. Like we did some cod fishing in the winter, macro fishing, your bass fishing when that's on. So if, you, if there's any specific fishing you want to do, you just need to speak to the skipper that you're going to be fishing with. He has tackle hire for people who don't have tackle and also he, does run, he runs individual days or like educational days. So if there's even if you're just on holiday and you fancy a bit of fishing, go and speak to chatterbots. Even though it was a, even though it was a targeted session that we were hoping to catch top, we did manage to get was it 11 species in total, wasn't it? 
did have a little strap reel as well. We had the turbo, we had uh, two different types of rays, smooth downs, dogfish, bullus, scarred mackerel. We had picked away at the fish all day. I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.